Jeremy Ryan reporting from Defending Wisconsin Political Action Committee, www.defendingwisconsin.org. In this video you're about to see here today, I go into a joint committee on finance hearing. And, uh, you know, this was probably about the most disgusting thing I've ever done in the Capitol or witnessed in the Capitol. And the reason is because uh, it was 12 Republicans versus 4 Democrats. And anything the Democrats wanted, the Republicans automatically shot down. As you'll see in the video, um, it became actually uh, kind of a uh, Senator Taylor versus uh, Representative Voss, Robert Voss, as you'll remember being a jerk, uh, as you remember Robert Voss was being a jerk in the other video that I had last, or a couple Wednesdays ago, the one where uh, Senator Weingart had pushed me. Um, and, you know, it's just really sad. It, it's sad because um, this really isn't democracy. This is called a loaded house, and this is uh, this is called uh, the needs of the people not getting through because Wisconsin's a purple state, and everything, all the committees, and everything are all red. Um, now uh, you'll notice a few things. Uh, there are a couple of things that you don't notice. I did actually tell she Senator Sheila Hartsdorf and uh, Alberta Darling. Uh, hope you guys enjoy the recalls, and uh, they kind of gave me a nasty look for that one. Um, but you know, I really uh, ended up uh, I ended up scaring Grothman away in this video um, by calling him out on his own decision to cut the children's future. Which, by the way, this school group I had actually invited them up to the Joint Committee on Finance hearing room because they were down in the rotunda, and uh, I had invited the school group that's shown in here up. And um, I don't think uh, Senator Nigren was very happy with my remarks towards him either about how he needs to take personal responsibility. Okay, so we can't talk about your votes in front of the kids? Well, then maybe you shouldn't vote that way. I wasn't being profane. I wasn't swearing or doing anything like that. So, um, you know, it's fair game. If you make a vote, you deserve to be called out on it. Uh, now, I do also want to note, uh, as I left, I left uh, by saying this is what Alec looks like. Um, Senator Ni or Representative Nigren, as you'll realize, uh, is the same representative in one of my Capitol Tour videos where people are coming out of his office and we're like, where are you from? And uh, are you lobbyists? And they're like, we're from Alec. Well, he's also wearing around his neck, as you see in the video, an Alec, uh, <coughs> an Alec uh, necklace. And so uh, that's pretty interesting. Senator Taylor continues to fight for us um, in the Joint Committee on Finance. Uh, Senator Zhao, maybe not as much, but uh, he voted uh, yes for the fiscal portion of the budget uh, repair bill. So. Uh, you know, I guess we know he's not fully, fully, um, fully on our side anyways. Uh, but with that, with that, uh, enjoy the video. Uh, be sure to give Senator Taylor a call. Um, give her office a call. Let me look up the number right now. Uh, enjoy the video. And, uh, you know, it's really sad. This is America, and this kind of stuff still goes on. It, it really is sad. Um... Uh, you know, you don't have any sort of balance. Uh, everything the Republicans want just goes through. Um, and unfortunately, uh, the people are the ones that end up getting hurt. Uh, you can give Senator Taylor's office a call and tell her uh, that you thank her at 608-266-5810. Once again, that number is 608-266-5810. The office, you saw Jeremy's video. Uh, they'll know what you're talking about. I'm going to forward it on to them. And uh, just... Be sure to thank her for uh, fighting for us. You know, it's not very easy when you're surrounded by 14 people who um, are going to try to shoot down everything you say. Jeremy Ryan reporting from Defending Wisconsin Political Action Committee, www.defendingwisconsin.org. Separation of church and state, question mark. Looks like a private concert for one of the senators. Jeremy Ryan reporting from Defending Wisconsin right, Political um, Action Committee at the I'm Joint sure Committee on Finance here. Yes. Uh, on your um, perspective, the Lady Clause says Milwaukee Colonial Choice Program. So anything related to the Milwaukee Colonial Choice Program would be appropriate. And maybe you could ask us. So would you like to move to appeal the decision of the chair? 
I guess if uh, the chair is not going to use the law and is going to deviate from using the law and being within the parameters of what the rule is, if that's the only way that I can get you to do what is appropriate and what is right, which is for us to deal with what is in the relating clause. Um, the relating clause says the law choice program. It does not say what you have articulated, Mr. Chair. So you have deviated from what it does. And so I appeal if you will not do what is appropriate. And Mr. Chair, that is a motion to appeal, but I would I would like Fiscal Bureau to address the issue. You stated that the relating clause um, in particular has to do with um, the issue uh, of the checks. However, the relating clause says Milwaukee Parental Choice Program, and this amendment is in line with the Milwaukee Parental Choice Program. Yeah, it's my decision. I don't have to ask the Fiscal Bureau. No, but I would like the uh, Fiscal Bureau decision. to address the... It's my decision, so we but are... So people, Mr. Co-Chair, could know the facts. I mean, I know you're the fact check for the Finance right. Committee, but the Fiscal Bureau is a nonpartisan organization that can speak to what the rule is and speak to that. You can rule however you choose to rule, but the issue of whether or not the relating clause is Milwaukee Criminal Choice Program or the relating clause is what you said, which is about the checks, I would like to have an answer to that from the Fiscal Bureau. And what, I bet, I'm not sure you would like to. I'm just asking for you to honor a, a process that allows us to at least get the facts out. You can rule however you choose to rule, Mr. Chair, and I've already said I'd like to appeal the ruling that you say that you will make. But I want the facts to come out, which is that the relating clause says the Milwaukee Criminal Choice Program, and then whether or not this amendment addresses the Milwaukee Criminal Choice Program, or whether or not it addresses what you're stating that the relating clause is, which is the checks, and then that that's what, how you're ruling. So can you please have a lot of fiscal bureau to answer that? We move them second to appeal the decision of the chair. All those in favor of the decision of the chair. Oh, scared of the answer, answer. are you, Mr. All those opposed will say no. Let's look at all the votes. Breaking the law. No. Meyer. No. Let me you. No. Nygren. No. Dracota. No. Clayfish. No. Grigsby. Yes. Uh, Schilling. Yes. Senator Darling. No. Olson. No. Arsdorf. No. Leibom. Grothman. No. Hopper. No. Taylor. Yes, for the laws of our state. Joe. I'm sorry that we weren't able to do the amendment that was before this that had us look at eligibility of, um, We're out of this the, and I'm sorry that we weren't able to look at the piece on the eligibility and say that if a person is poor enough to We're get back here, event. and I'm making a point, and I'm certain that you would hear me out, you wouldn't know what that point was. But I'm sorry that we weren't able to do the amendment that says tie the poverty of a family um, to health care. They can, uh, they're that poor enough to get. Matter? Yes, it is. If they're poor enough to get Badger care, then they should be poor one? enough. As I stated, um, if I can get past the first two statements, uh, if they're I poor enough to get Badger care, then they should be poor enough to get this program. And if we can let actors be in the program based on their poverty, then we should also keep bad actors who teach our children out of the program. We should set boundaries. And so I am sorry that my appeal to the chair to address the issue of income boundaries were not heard. But I hope um, uh, held in. Um, were there. So I'm asking in the name of the small percentage of people of uh, color who happen to be black in this state that we could do this small token of $25,000 per year that will go to help to protect that history and to make it possible for it to go forth in the name of the only person who survived the lynching, Mr. Kim. Senator Jim. Uh, I want to say that I think it's um, great that we're, in the, that we're deleting the earmark, that we're not using it for the historical purposes, that we're, although we're giving $200,000 to Milwaukee, I think it's in 
excited about all of those things, but I find it amazing that you can support the only museum for black Wisconsin. They just explain your motion, but we're not going to have them explain what the environmental fund is. But I think that it is. We had a public hearing and we had an opportunity to go through all that. I think all of us understand what the environmental improvement fund is in the committee, right? Well, so on the motion. On the motion, and I think it is important, Mr. Coxer, for it to be explained so that individuals understand how the fund is used and how this percentage has a direct effect. When you say subsidies, people won't necessarily understand. So I'm asking for it to be broken down, that this fund is used for the purposes of helping sewage districts and how this percentage of rate, how it actually works. And I think that it is important so that individuals realize the frankly millions of dollars that will in tax increases, basically, that individuals can end up having, and the having, and the effect that um, it will have on smaller entities versus the larger entities like MMSD. And so, I think that that does have to be broken down. And as someone who um, sits on MMSD, and someone who had to even read this paper a couple of times, I don't think it's Mr. Coach. Obviously, you just answered your own question. Well, no, I'm trying to make sure. I don't I don't want to Senator make Jow. the assumption. Wow. Mr. Cochier, why is it that my Senator question Jow. is not able to be answered? We'll we're not going to keep having the same debate on a question that all of us answer that you're only asking that's obvious in the paper. No, Mr. Cochier. So what we're is on the amount of the motion? If we don't want to. Mr. Cochier, I think that it's shameful that you continue to I mean, I, I shut down the fourth the the district. Do I mean, you know, you can, of course. As the then we'll just go ahead and call the roll. Clerk will call the roll. Chair, I'm Zanavoss. Well, I have a question. I, I called on you three times and you didn't talk. Well, so Senator Cowell. Mr. Cochier, I should be, I don't, I do not understand that. I do not understand that. And you still have to Or do you want to continue a program that distributes these resources in a way that says, let's enhance their quality of life because when their quality of life is improved, so also is ours. If you continue... Which is the reason that we're at option number one. This man votes in charge of education. Yeah, I guess when I read the papers, I guess my question is, okay. this man doesn't want as much, much money in your education. kind of rude here. <laughs> Shut up, Grothman. My name is John Nigel. I'm the representative of New York. He also voted to cut your education. He really needs a kid. You want to challenge it? You made the vote. You got to stand up for what you do. Let's go into here. We'll talk for a little bit. Have some responsibility, Nigel. Many communities simply have not made the investment. I couldn't ask for the hardship money. These are the people you're going to cut. These are the people whose futures aren't going to be as good. And so, setting the money aside, oh you say you're not going to spend it. These are the people whose futures you're destroying. Setting the money aside does do no harm if you don't spend it. Much more. But by having it there, it gives them an opportunity to do it. This is Nigren going to talk to the kids whose future he's destroying. Funny how he's got an Alec thing on his neck. Yep, I do. Yes, he does. Look at that. This is what Alec looks like. 